Okay, welcome to Ace Harbor Library's book club. Uh, today we are discussing uh, Know My Name, and this was chosen uh, by our group as a memoir. But what was interesting, um, it's not cataloged as a memoir. What is I it cataloged as? Social issues. Oh. So uh, when the the library people decide, you know, even says memoir on the front, but I think that the issue is so important and it's talking about what a person um, goes through uh, when, um, when this happens to them. So um, yeah, I think that's why it, it got this. So we had uh, quite a few people say they weren't going to attend today because it's such a, a difficult topic and they either didn't read the book or read the book. And so we were really even thinking about not putting it on Facebook Live, but now after discussing it with the people that were in the room, we will, because I think it's an important topic. I, need, I know I've been watching, I watch CBS News and Nora O'Donnell's been doing an investigative report on uh, female um, soldiers in the army that have been raped. Has anyone seen that? No. Yeah. No, I'm not. No. Yes. No, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, I, I was shocked. And a lot of it is, um, pretty much what Chanel um, says in her book. And, uh, and I know they interviewed two sets of parents whose daughters um, committed suicide and um, uh, over it. So yeah, I, I had no idea uh, about this and it was a difficult book to read. Um, anyone else have trouble reading it? I, it was eloquent. She has a gift. Oh my gosh. Very good writer. I didn't, I thought I, I, you just get so angry. I mean, I think I had to put it down, especially during this time frame that we're living in right now with the president and his action. I mean, all these, I had to put it down just to take a break sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Towards the end, when she was bringing it up to current date, I was like, just sick at that point. Like yeah. less about her story, but then like when, it, you know, she was like, I said, yeah, like bringing up things that are happening currently, it was just, oh, sick. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I remember this case. How many of you remember this on the Oh, news? yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Very yes. vaguely. <laughs> Yeah, did, I've seen her did, interviewed on TV as well. Yeah, did anyone read her victim statement after, um, like back when it was happening? I, I no, don't know. No, it was on Buzzfeed, and um, and yeah, so it was like a summary of the book. The um, at the end when uh, her victim statement that went viral. Um, Let's, I have a video I'm gonna share with you. It's just a short one. Uh, I read and listened. So um, she's got a monotone voice. <laughs> yeah. She would make a great comedian. <laughs> the way <laughs> oh, she does, she did do that. So. I know, she's, she did stand up. I said, comedy. I know she's she would be good at it because just the way um, she spoke. Um, so I, I just want you. She's a beautiful woman, and um, she's. Um, I'll let I'll let you take a listen to this. Um, are you seeing the screen? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. I wrote this book because it's something that is so intimate and trapped internally for you does become a story and all of the people who intimidated you and felt much bigger than you like the defense attorney become characters 
I needed my anonymity for a long time to protect myself and create the space that I needed to heal. I still didn't know what the assault meant. I didn't understand how it had changed me and I worried that letting people in too early, they would sort of determine how it affected me. In the courtroom, you were constantly berated. In the book, I describe it as the defense attorney tying my shoelaces together and forcing me to run. It was completely disorienting. It was insulting. They speak about your body as if it's an object. It can be projected for everyone else to see and critique and to tell you what that abrasion means, that it's really nothing. It was extremely painful to sit there through all of that, to never be allowed to raise my voice or to express how it was hurting me. I know it is possible to achieve justice without fully dehumanizing the victim. And that's what we need to figure out. We obviously know how to humanize the perpetrator. I watched it happen repeatedly to see his character so fully rounded out. If they can do that for him, they can learn to do it for me. We may spend half our time wandering around, wondering what we're even doing here, why it's worth the effort. But living is an incredible thing, just to have been here, to have felt, if only briefly, the volume and depth of others' empathy. I wrote, most of all, to tell you I have seen how good the world could be. So uh, it's good if you've not ever seen her to see that and um, hear her voice. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Let me turn my... Do you hear that? Yeah. I'm like, what is that? Um, so it's good to, you know, hear her and um, see her and wow, um, powerful woman. Um, yeah, it, the whole trial, uh, what she had to go through, the length of it, and listening to the women on that CBS and, uh, you know, they didn't want to go through that. They, you know, that the whole dragging it up and keeping having to talk about it and um, is, is and how it, it takes over your, I mean, I don't think I realized, I mean, this was years and they would say, okay, it's happening next week and everyone would arrange their schedule. And then it was like, nope, it's not happening next week. It's happening, you know, next week. And I mean, just to have your whole life centered on this one thing that you don't want to remember anymore for this years I, I just I couldn't believe that yeah yeah she couldn't have a job I mean no it, it affected the way she um she worked I have to tell you that Lucas is uh, her boyfriend what a, a what oh a, what a nice guy yeah yeah and and how supportive but I don't think um, that's always the case, uh, having someone like that and her family. And um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, I, I um, on CBS last night, one of the people they uh, interviewed said, it's the loneliest trauma you can experience. And um which sums it up and to have Lucas there, even though she's suffering and, and can't pull him in all the time. She's, she's like a couple of times, like when they were skiing, he says, he just left her, you know, she'll talk to me when she needs to talk to me. And, and that is so, um, so big of him. So. Well, it's rare. I think it's rare that anybody knows when, because you want to help them. And sometimes we over, you know, you hover. Yeah. As, and, and he knew when to back off and when to help out, which is an amazing gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially for a man, because they want to step in and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. They want to, yeah. My husband wants to fix everything. No, I'm just telling you this. You don't have to read. <laughs> just... Yeah. 
it. I know how to fix it. Dad. Or it's not going to get fixed or whatever. But he, yeah, he wants to fix it. He thinks he can fix everything. You can't. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, I think the part of the book that was the most jarring was when she said how many people saw her nude how many people saw the runner when she added up all the people that had seen her exposed it was just amazing I, to me that was just oh my gosh you know that it, it was incredible that the runners by and this person and that person and then you had the doc all these people it was really uh that i think that was the biggest impact is how many people see you in this state. Yeah. And even taking pictures when she's at the um, rape trauma center that, you know, they take pictures of everything and, uh, and measure everything. And it's uh, such a, uh, oh, a horrible, Thing to go through um yeah and and her sister fe feeling so responsible uh and her mother i dropped her off and um yeah so all of all the people who, who suffer with you uh is evident in in that so um i sent questions because uh, this is going to be uh, a hard one uh to talk about so we'll probably um uh, go through the questions to make sure, you know, we're staying because unless anyone has anything they want to say before we start going through the questions. I thought um, well, that it was an important book. I don't know if I would have ever chosen to read this book. Uh, I know a lot of people read it after seeing her. She was interviewed in a lot of places. Uh, usually a book that is is important like this in the library system every library would have had this book in door county we were the only one that had this book so um and it, it you know appleton had it maybe sturgeon bay had it but it's not everywhere um, where i think now people are purchasing it uh but uh, i think it's an important book but i don't think i would have picked it up um, just even after her interview. But my daughter would have picked it up. Now she's 34 and she goes, oh yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that book. I want to read it. And um, so somebody, Jess, would this be a book you would want to read? Like if it wasn't on this list? Um, if somebody suggested it to me, I guess, I wouldn't like be browsing books and be like, oh, this, you know. Yeah. And that's maybe why we don't have as many people wanting to talk about it because it's like it's, it's so hard to talk about it and then read about it too. Um, we see it on TV and TV shows and movies and, and listen to it on the news and then to read about it. But um, I think as Marsha was saying, going through the whole, uh, or Linda, you said about the length of the trial yeah you know and that's why maybe someone would say hey i, I don't want to do this and um and you know i what would you i don't know if she would have done it if it wasn't the people at the trauma center who said would you like to um prosecute would you like to uh and the way that they were she, she thanked them at the end because they were really uh it's who you encounter after the fact that makes you, do you want to say your story or do you want to keep it quiet? And I think the people that she dealt with were really, um, uh, they were good. I think she met some good people. I don't know if that's the case everywhere. Well, and I think that like the fact that she, you know, woke up in the hospital that, you know, cause they'd say, they say that like with a lot of rape victims, it's, you know, it happens and then you go home and the first instinct is to like shower and, you know, yeah, just clean all the evidence off of you. And had she not been, you know, passed out, you know, 
and had people come to save her, it would have been a totally different story. So definitely that was part of her ability to really kind of come forward is to have that support around her right away because people already knew about it. You know, she didn't, it wasn't that she had to tell somebody and then tell another, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hope now with um, the Me Too movement that more people feel comfortable if this happens to do this. I mean, I think in just even a few years ago, it, it would have been, oh, it's your fault. It, well, like some people project, it's your fault. You were drunk. You did this. It's not ever the guy's fault. Heaven forbid he should take any responsibility, as we know. But I think now we're advocating for these women more and more people are realizing it's not their fault it's it's truly the other person's fault and um i'm hoping anyway that it is more because of all these people that have come forward now and uh, pursued you know actions against weinstein and you know and all these people that are getting retribution i mean bill cosby just think, the right. guy's in jail. This is, uh, I mean, he was, who knew what a predator he was? I mean, who knew about these guys? Evidently somebody did, but they didn't come forward. And so therefore it just, you know, went on and on and on because these guys have power. And I also think Stanford, that he was a swimmer. He was this big guy on campus. Once again, it's these guys who think, you know, I can do this because I'm me. Well, and I thought it was interesting at the end where um, she brought up that, you know, she looked back at, uh, what is his name? I don't even know. The guy Brock. that raped her or Brock. didn't. Brock. Yeah, Brock. Brock. You know, she looked back and, you know, I mean, he had some stupid little job, you know, leading up to, you know, he, yes, he was, you know, going to be this Olympic swimmer, but there wasn't anything, you know, they were like, oh my God, you've ruined his life. He was going to be this, he was going to be that. And she looked back and it was like, well, I don't see anything, you know, that like, he's going to be this fantastic person. And it's like, they base his life on you've ruined his life. And, and no one ever said, okay, yeah. Chanel did this and she was going to have this fantastic career and you've completely derailed her life. And, and, you know, it, it, it's so true. You know, all these people that stood up and said, Oh, he was such a good student. Oh, he was so this, Oh, he was so that. And it's like, it has no, I, nothing to do with what you've been up to this point. It has to do with what you did in those you know, that half hour time period. This is what we're talking about. This is what he did and he needs to be punished. Yeah, a tone. Yeah, I think that still shows society, the value that society puts on a woman's life versus a man's life. And yes. I think that, you know, because yeah, what she wasn't going to be anything, maybe a housewife, but a guy, he's going to be something someday. What's, uh, if you look up Brock Turner online, it, because he's a, a registered sex offender, it says exactly where he lives, where, what he's doing right now, how much he's making that comes up right away. And, um, and I, I, I'm all for knowing, uh, as a teacher, I know I always looked up who the sex offenders are in my neighborhood because they have to register. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, uh, you know, he deserves that. And the yeah, thing I just, you're right, I just looked him up. He's working at an entry level job at Tarkin Company. He's making $12 an hour and he lives at home. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's, uh, registers all over now where you can um, look at your neighborhood to see if there's uh, mm -hmm. a registered sex offender. And um, yeah, I think it's, 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 this has not always been the case. And I think it, it's important and um, yeah, he belongs there. And the, the whole idea that he would not show a remorse is I think, um, you know, saying, why, 
I mean, that's, that's what made her so angry. Well, this is the other thing that's interesting. The California judge who only gave him six months was recalled. And so uh, former Santer, so he is gone now because of his judgment in this case, which I think is absolutely great that they, they realized that this guy didn't get, didn't get it. This judge didn't get it. Judges have to understand what went on too. Mm -hmm. And, and she, when they, another failure, I mean, there was a lot of failures uh, to Chanel in the system. And uh, I think a big failure was his probation officer calling her. Oh yeah. Asking, uh, what she thought and then miss misspeaking on her on her misspeaking her words really uh i thought that was a failure there was a lot of failures um so um sorry about that <laughs> i mean um, didn't i it just like wasn't her couldn't her lawyer have talked to the probation officer like it just seemed it, he crossed the line or she crossed the line there with you know mm -hmm. just seemed odd yeah. Yeah. Uh, that CBS um, special is featuring, I think, like four women and one man. So I think, you know, we think of the rape culture as just women. There are men, too, I think, that are affected. So I think that's, if you have some time, uh, watch it. So you see that it's, yes, women are pretty, as, the women they're interviewing, it, it's more of a woman's problem, but there are men, the whole Boy Scout thing. I oh, know. yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the stuff that's happening. And um, and it's because of our media and it's because um, it's easier to get stories out there. And, um, but so. But have you noticed that? Wait, have just there's noticed? another interesting. Have you noticed with the point. boy says the Boy um, Scouts? Okay, wait a minute. Let's have Deb and then Marsha. Deb. I was going to say, have you noticed, though, with the Boy Scouts and the priest issue, the Catholic Church issue, yeah. nobody seems to question that. They're like, oh, yeah, this all happened. But when a woman gets raped, it's like, well, what were you wearing? Were you drunk? There's questions yeah. and people don't want to believe it. What were you eating? Yeah. Uh, was yeah. It because you didn't, you know, was. How yeah. much did Right, blah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, this is interesting. It says um, she released her memoir in 2019 and the um, publishing company says, uh, the editor of Viking Books told the New York Times, this is the one, the most important books I've ever published. So that's really saying something. If Viking prints think this is one of their most important books, it's very interesting in that regard. So they really, think this is a great, you know, this is an important topic to have out now. And um, Chanel writes, they seemed angry that I'd made myself vulnerable more than the fact that he acted on my vulnerability. Um, so it's the word, the whole thing of uh, discuss how consent is defined both in the context of her trial and in society as a whole, much was made of the fact that Chanel never said no, despite the fact that she was unable to do so, when in reality, consent should be an enthusiastic and ongoing. How can we change the conversation about consent? Like, you know, they, that's in a trial, it's, um, did you say no? You know, it, and um, it's a big to do if you didn't say no, because he was like, you know, she wanted it. She didn't say no. Um, so well, not only you, just uh, saying no, not only just saying no, it's did you fight back? Did yeah. you scream? Enough? That sort of stuff goes on as well. And it's no, I feared for my life. I couldn't scream or but then that's, you know, disqualified. Well, yeah. it's hard to say no when you're passed out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, did you did anyone see there was I just looked it up and it's it's called there's a video out there. It's called consent. It's as simple as tea. 
And I know, I think I saw it on Facebook. And it's one of these where, you know, a guy and a woman, I, I, I can't remember, it's, it's two minutes and 50 seconds, but it's sort of that whole thing. You know, if I ask you, if you want tea and you say, yes, I pour you some tea. If you say no, I don't pour you any tea. If you, you know, don't answer me, I still don't pour you any tea. You know, I don't just, and it was just comparing, you know, the whole, you know, if you're sleeping and I offer you tea, I don't pour you a cup of tea. You know, you didn't, you can't answer me. And it was, it was, it was good. It was, but yeah, I think it's on YouTube. Yeah. A cup of tea and consent. Okay. That'll be good. I'll, I'll put that on our Facebook page. Cause I, I think I've seen that too. Probably well, it's a new, a new sexual consent campaign compares rape with forcing people to, I, to drink tea. I don't know, I just remember watching it and it was like, yeah, I mean, this totally explains it. If a woman cannot say yes, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean she's saying, or doesn't say no, doesn't mean she's saying yes. I mean, how yeah. hard is that to mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. But I guess it is hard to understand because they wow. don't. And, and I, I was so excited about those Swedes. I mean, they, that they came along, the Swedes. <laughs> and she's never formally met them. You know, she's seen them, but never, have, she calls them the Swedes. And he, when they, after they tackled him, when the police were talking to him, one was crying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it was so bad that it would affect him that way. And um, that should have held a lot more weight than it did. Well, she made, she made some in the end, I think, or I think, I don't know if it was in the acknowledgements or. Yeah, yeah. But she, yeah, she did meet them and they were sad that they, they, they were sorry that they didn't do more or they didn't show up, you know, five minutes earlier is what they said. Yeah. One of the guys. Do you, do you think that's a cultural thing? You know, that the boys or guys in Europe or Sweden grow up learning respect of women? And no, maybe not as I feel like I feel like there are good men in the U.S. in the U.S. Oh, just... Absolutely, yeah, no, absolutely. But you know, I mean, I used to, I, through the book, I kept thinking about the father supporting the son, and I can understand wanting them to have a fair trial, but to belittle the woman during the trial, or you know, it, it just I kept thinking, how would I feel if my son did this? As I was reading the book, yeah. Well, obviously, he wasn't raised right. We see the father as the problem, one of the issues there. Yeah, yeah. And the mother, they allowed it. To, I mean, there was more. He was a creep. I mean, <laughs> he was really creepy. Um, some of the things he did, you know, just rubbing up on people and kissing people didn't want to be kissed and. And other people had seen him at other parties. And, uh, you know, just because you're in college and that's just, he was a now, creepy He was guy. a star too. He was a star. So he thought he could do no wrong because he'd been treated like a star yes. his whole life. And this is the problem with some of these people. And I'm not saying all of these people, but so many of these people that have been treated this way because they have this skill of some sort be it football or hockey they're just like oh you can do this because you're so you know what I mean they give them leeway in other ways and they're they think they can do no wrong they can do whatever they want because they are the star and this is what he thought because this is how he'd been treated his whole life because he had the skill and his parents allowed him to use that it was alcohol that was the problem, not him. That, yeah. uh, you know, he was in this drinking culture and that's what made him be like that, that night. Um, but they wouldn't admit that. They never admit it. They said she was willing the whole time. And, and I wonder if they could have, you know, if he would have, said that he was guilty if he would have gotten a better sentence, you know, a more lenient sentence, if he would have said, yes, it was a mistake. I, you know, like if he would have gotten 
you know, not, not as many charges or something, like if he would have just admitted that he was wrong. Yes, I, I think he, that was what angered her so much. I think she would have, um, when they gave the, uh, you know, what do you think his sentence should be? Um, she was, if he had showed remorse, a year. But um, he showed no remorse. And the judge anyways gave him three months and um, which, yeah. And he still to this day doesn't admit that he did anything wrong. So, uh, um, So one of the arguments about, and we've talked about this already, but one of the arguments about punishing Brock beyond six months in jail is that serving a prison sentence would ruin his life. And we talked already. And yet as Chanel asks in this book, what about my life? And we talked mm -hmm. about that. Hers is not the only life affected. Discuss how the experience affected Chanel and her loved ones. So, um, like Tiffany, I mean, it, it, her whole college experience was affected uh, by that. And um, so any, uh, and we talked about Lucas, um, how, uh, how that affected him um, and her dad. I mean, her dad is a counselor and he's counseling people who probably have similar situations and now his own daughter um so uh yeah anyone want to add anything to that <laughs> i guess <Okay>. not <laughs> no i think her sister i mean her sister couldn't sleep her sister couldn't sleep and it, she had similar problems and i mean all these people put their their lives on hold and and not only what about the poor healthcare facility people that helped her? I mean, this is, I'm sure it affects them too. It's not just the immediate family. I think, what about the, the Swedish man or, or the boy or whatever? I mean, it affects a lot of people that may not, you know, you may not even know about, but I'm, you know, anytime you have a trauma like this, it's, it's it's like you throw the stone in the pond and the ripples go out. It's it 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 affects more people than even one realizes, I think. And as we had one person not be able to come on, I mean, she's it happened to her. Um, she was raped in high school, and she's probably in her seventies now, and it's still something she can't talk about. Um, about this because it hurts so much. So Chanel, it's not over with, even though she wrote this book, it's all, it's gonna be with her, her whole life. And um, she can't, I mean, even though, if you take a look at the cover, do you know what this cover means? Well, she, she used said. an alias during the trial. So now know my name. Yeah, but the cover art, so um, in China, when a piece of porcelain breaks, uh, what they do is um, they put it together, not with glue, but with a, a gold uh, gold to make it um, whole again, but a different look, make it nicer almost. And so she was broken and she's put back together. Not the same anymore. She's, it'll always affect her. And I think this cover uh, is symbolic of that. Um, did anyone read the back about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because covers can, you know, because that's such a simple looking cover, right? And another reason probably it's not being picked off the shelf covers me. Yeah, I, I, you know, and I get, I, you know, I, I knew about the gold and putting it back together, but yeah, I, for me, the cover was just, I don't know. It had, it just, I, I never would have picked up that book. Yeah. Like it picked up the Dutch house because it had such a beautiful cover, yeah. <laughs> but this yeah, cover I would have never picked up, I would have never picked up this book uh, unless, which is good. This is why book clubs are good. Book clubs. <laughs> yeah. it makes you pick up and 
and read books that you might not normally read and give you a, a different perspective. Um, no, I would have never picked this book up. I mean, so beyond the, you know, the, the major story, the rape, I mean, I also thought it was really interesting. I found it super inspiring that she went to the print school and, you know, um, ended up kind of coming out of her shell with her roommate. And then the fact that she really like stood up to these like gross guys that are catcalling her, like that's something that, I mean, if you haven't been victimized by rape, you've certainly been victimized by someone catcalling you. And just like, it was felt so good when she just like started yelling at those people. Like, you know, it's just, that's something that like, as a female you encounter all the time. And it just felt so good to just have her yell at those people and then you know when her friends got in on it so I felt like that part was really inspiring too because mm -hmm. she goes off on her own and then she just starts yelling at these creeps you know yeah yeah she um uses names interesting like um she calls herself Emily Doe which uh she doesn't want her name out there but she would call different people different things like um apple seed what was that um you know one apple seed's okay but it, you're toxic because they were trying to do that park for her and oh you know St Sanford is you know doing everything for you we're doing this park and and really it wasn't about that what do you think about uh the university's role in this whole thing and um Oh, they didn't do what they should have, as most colleges, I don't think, I don't think, now maybe now, but I doubt it. I mean, they, I don't think the colleges do what they should. I don't think they're coming out. I mean, you have many of them that have had situations like this and they sweep them all under the carpet. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, just not have, you know, having a a park where the dumpster was um, for victims. Yeah, that's nice to have an area um, for victims, of, but not allowing her, you know, they said, okay, you can put a quote there, um, but they didn't like her quote. And um, what did you think about all that? And I, I don't remember what she wanted to say, but I didn't think anything, I thought, well, that's a good, you know, I'm not okay. Because she, um, her sister said, uh, how are you? I'm okay. You know, that's what they wanted to put on there. They took it out of context and she wanted to put something completely different that you're not okay. It's going to affect you. So what'd you think about the university's position in this whole thing? Besides- I thought uh, it was pretty stupid, really. <laughs> I, I thought it was really a dumb idea and I didn't care for it at all. Oh, um, they just, they just kind of took a back seat and shoved it under the rug and weren't going to do anything about it. I, I enjoyed the meeting late. So I wondered if, you know, when you were talking about, was there a passage that really affected me? And there was on page 47 of the book. Um, I don't have the book with me. I turned it in. So if you want to just kind of read that, it really gave her um, viewpoint uh, I thought it was I thought it was very interesting. She was a marvelous writer. But yeah, the book was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know her her way with words, um, her comparison Fantastic. is just yeah. and I, I wish I had my own book because I think I would have highlighted things. And yes, I would have too. I've got to get those sticky post-it notes to keep at home. Oh, so <laughs> I could put Okay, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> But I thought the college that was that was kind of dumb. I didn't think that was worthwhile at all. Yeah, they, my they want it was like <laughs> all show and not mm -hmm. real really. And, and if they cared about her, they they were at the trauma center because they were afraid for themselves, but not really afraid for her because they never mm -hmm. touched base with her after that. Um, which they should have been, she should, and, and she always wondered, was it because I wasn't a student? Uh, maybe that's why they didn't um, check with me, but it was one of their own that did it. They should have been checking with, 
with them. So yeah, the whole um, brushing it under the carpet, you're right. And I, I think universities need to do more about this, you know, in the student orientation, freshman orientation should have a whole um, section on uh, what things, you know, can happen like this. Yeah, they did. But remember, DeVos have now made it more equal for the for the other person now or the, you know, you have the victim and the person. They had that whole thing in place where they were taking more of the victim statement and then DeVos kind of backed off on that. So maybe now that she won't be in anymore and we have somebody of maybe somebody who knows what's going on, that will be more equal. Is but that in the book. No, so, it wasn't in the well, book, but this is no. DeVos just, there was a big thing where she made it, it more equal to both parties or not more equal, but it, it sided with the person, to, perpetrator. It sided with the two. perpetrator. Yeah. yeah. Right, Deb? Didn't, isn't she? Yeah. Didn't she, didn't, she gives yeah. more weight to the person that was accused. Right. Again. Right. Pushed it back to the way it used to be. Yeah. And DeVos did that? I mean, yes. why would she, yes. I don't understand why she would have even a say in that. I mean, that seems more. She's a, a secretary of education for the country. Yeah, I know, but, but the rape culture and who's accused, I don't know, that, that just seems weird to me that she would even. Well, she did. Huh. Because yeah. I remember the whole, I was thinking, what is going on with this woman? Yeah. I, have, I have it on my phone. Betsy DeVos releases final changes to campus sexual assault policies. Wow. So, yeah, students are reacting. They released new guidelines on how K-12 and universities should handle complaints of sexual assault and misconduct. Well, now, under rework rule, alleged, yeah, alleged student perpetrators will have added protections. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she did. She must have sons. I think she owns private schools. Her family does. I think that's yes. where she got yeah, her money. Yeah, she's something with the charters. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. a big Amway person. She, her husband. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're all part of the Amway thing. The ah. huh. oh. I went to college and at Hope College, and they're from that area. Ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I was yeah. surprised at the back how she brought it up to like the time period. Were you surprised at that? I, I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. that just happened. And um, yeah. so I was really surprised about that. And um, Joe Biden reached out to her right after. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Isn't that amazing that he wrote that letter to her. I was yeah. just. He had I'm empathy. Guy is. Yeah. And that's before, I mean, this book came out last year. So it's before the whole election and everything. And um and the whole Kavanaugh thing was in there and the Trump um, CBS Bush thing was in there. And um, so it really brings it to, and that's probably why it's not a memoir, it's a social issue because it really brought it up to date with uh, what's happening in our world today. So, oh, hey, her mom uh, was an interesting character. Um, she went through the Cultural Revolution. If you've ever read any books about the cult Cultural Revolution in China, it is something, I, which is the 70s. <laughs> You're like, I grew up in the 70s. And then this, they're taking away all their great education and women and moving, men. Moving them back to the country to be re-educated, right? Re-educated. Mm -hmm. And so her mother, um, you know, coming over and uh, being an author, and now um, Chanel uh, being an author uh, is um, I, the gift that is um, continuing. And I think we'll see Chanel Miller. Um, I think she wants to be a children's author, but I think we'll see her name uh, again in, a, as an author. Um, she's, she's a great writer. I mean, it was a hard topic, um, but it, I kept reading because um, her words were, were, were really profound. 
So um, did you talk about that statement that she wrote at the last, you know, when it was being when the judge was recalled and she had written this big statement? Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. And the victim's statement, yeah, <laughs> oh, which I said is a great summary of the book. Um, it, right, it, up, is, it is. It, ending the book with the victim's statement really then ties the whole, she is really a gifted person. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how she did it. <laughs> yeah, amazing. yeah, so, and uh, I love the whole, uh, the rescue, <laughs> that they were rescuing those dogs. That was kind of, you know, there, it was a difficult book, but every once in a while it was like funny. <laughs> uh, and uh, the rescuing the dogs and ending up with the Pomeranian. Not yeah. The <laughs> so there was um, some lightness to the book, even though it was so heavy. Um, any favorite parts of the book? Are oh, uh, that, another one was when she was, they were walking down the street, her girlfriends, and some guys in a car started hooting and hollering at him, you know, and she goes out in the street and screams bloody murder. Yeah. That was yeah. funny. That yeah. was funny. <laughs> you know, she was the person, she was a very interesting person, is a very interesting person. She's still alive. So that was, that was funny, I thought. Yeah. Not many people would do that, you know, we'd run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, and, and now has anyone seen her on any of the talk shows? She's been on a lot of, um, talk shows, Noah or, um, Trevor Noah, she's been on his show, um, and uh, anyone seen, I think she's Good Morning America, she's been on, she's been on, I, I haven't seen her, um, on any of these shows, but, um, she's, she's out there now, um, would like to see her uh, her comedy act. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of funny. So um, yeah. Well, we're we're drawing to a close. Anyone want to say anything else? I think we really went through the all the questions. I was going to put them up. Um, it was having a little technical problem, so. Uh, but we really did go through all those questions that um, I sent you. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, we did a good job, I think. And so any this, is, this is just a little off topic, but after I read that book, I read a book, uh, it's a new book out by, I think it's Megan Golden. It's called, I think it's called The Night Swim. And oh, I have, have you read it? No, I haven't. I think you have, Peter, you have Peter Rock's Night Swimmers. Oh, okay. That's the Ephraim is it, story. Okay. But it's a, whatever her newest book is, but basically I think she takes that Brock character and that is what the book is about, is it's a, um, a swimmer accused of rape. Um, huh? So again, totally different, a fictional version, but I think she was basing it on him. I don't know. That's what it felt yeah. like. Interesting. Yeah. So just something if you want to read a fictionalized, the girl, nothing like this. I mean, totally different, but yeah, interesting that it was a swimmer that was accused and parents defending him and all yeah. that stuff. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Well, our next book is um, This Tender Land uh, for December. And again, we're doing the third Thursday because Christmas lands on the fourth Thursday. And um, This Tender Land is written by William Krieger something. I know. William Kent Krieger. Yeah. William Kent Krieger. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, a very, very popular author at, at our library. Um, he has a series of mystery books that um, people just gobble up and just read one after another. It's like uh, Louise Penny people who want to read all her books as fast. <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes, Deb, please. We love Louise Penn. We love I, Louise. He was a Door County Reads author also. He's from Minnesota. And yeah. so that's our, we have plenty of books to go around to all of the people in our community. If you need one, just email me. They'll be ready tomorrow at, after 10 when I get to work tomorrow. I'll put them out for you. 
So if you need a tender land, um, you just, I know I'm gonna put one out for Jerry. Linda and Deb already picked theirs up and uh, anyone else who needs a copy, just let me know. Marsha needs one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, put, uh, I'll have yours in size. So you can come in. Okay. <laughs> shelf. <laughs> Hey, I'll show. <laughs> and Janine, what about the books past January or past? Yeah, January. They're all up. I just we have them up through June. Oh, okay. I just yeah. have only up on the um, slide through January. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. If you want to, are they on the Facebook page? Uh, they are on the Door County Library Facebook page for Egg Harbor. Okay. Yeah, so you'll see all of our books. So I, I have a list if you need it. I mean, I have it on my calendar. So I yeah, we evolve. I, the books will be a little lighter as the year goes on, and then we end with a really difficult book. Um, I'm ready for something really inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this one was inspiring in a way, but. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. Okay, well, everyone, thanks for joining us today. And uh, any last comments, uh, anyone? Glad that you all came. Uh, I was worried that we weren't going to, after I had all these people emailing me saying they weren't coming, I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. it's good to hear from everyone. Have a nice Thanksgiving and I will see you, you next month, uh, third Ooh. Thursday this tender land. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.